This morning on CBS 2 News, the search continues for a teen who drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir, why the family is now turning to the community for help. Plus, another set of remains uncovered at Lake Mead, what we know this morning about the third body found in the last three months. And later, wildfires continue to light up the western U.S. A look at some of the blazes burning across the west, including right here in Idaho. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look from downtown Boise on this Tuesday, July 26th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Temperature outside right now about 64 degrees. Not exactly the cool down that we would like for the overnight hours because this is really the time where we open up our windows, let some of that cooler air in and try to keep it in for the entirety of the day. But these overnight lows continue to creep on up. Vasily, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, right now we're a little bit hotter here in the Boise area, 71 degrees right now here in Boise. So if you have that window open, it might not be as cool as it's been over the past couple days. Over in Mountain Home, however, 64 degrees there, 68 over in Ontario, and then up in the mountains, 56 degrees over in McCall right now. So cooler temperatures this morning, but those will not be sticking around. We are expecting high temperatures today and the rest of the week. Future cash shown us what we can expect over the next few days in terms of cloud cover and Tuesday is going to be relatively clear Wednesday the clouds will start to roll in especially during the day but once night comes the, it'll start to see clearer and clearer skies in the Treasure Valley area up in the mountains we may see some clouds there however today in Boise we're looking at 102 degrees and we're looking at the triple digits throughout the Treasure Valley over in Ontario 105 expected in Eastern Oregon and then up in the mountains 92 degrees in McCall. Ooh, yeah, it is a hot day ahead. Thank you, Vasily. Pretty mild out there this morning, 502 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything seems to be running smoothly, looking good in all directions. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. This morning, a shocking story out of the Hillcrest Country Club. Its general manager charged with two felonies, one of them sexual in nature. Now, Max Dean Moreno was arrested last Thursday on one count of forcible penetration and one count of battery. According to the president of Hillcrest Country Club, the alleged assault, it happened after regular business hours, but on Hillcrest property. He says they are cooperating with Boise police as they're working to make changes at the club. Now, his statement reads in part, quote, rest assured the board is addressing this issue in a timely and professional manner and will continue to focus our attention on preserving a safe environment for our members, their families and our employees, end quote. Now, Marino has been suspended and Brandy Ramirez is taking over as the interim general manager. This morning, police looking for the person behind a vandalism in a Boise neighborhood. Take a look at this. Now it's near Shadow Hills Elementary School. Someone painted swastikas on the bike path near Sloan Street and Rowe Avenue. Boise police say someone did tell them about it on Saturday. The Ada County Highway District will clean it up later this morning. The person who did this could be charged with malicious harassment. Continuing coverage now, it's been a week now since a Boise teen named Bobby was thrown from his jet ski and drowned up at Lucky Peak Reservoir. Well, local law enforcement are suspending their underwater search, and CBS 2's Angela Kerndall shares how family is now calling on volunteers from the community to help. Our family needs him home because this is where he belongs and we need to be able to put him, let him rest. 16-year-old Bobby Sichilalik's family is still searching the waters of Lucky Peak each day with their own boats. We know he's there. None of us are going to stop, even if it's just two or three or five or seven people, or if there's 50 people, you know, there's there will be somebody out there looking for him until we do. Ada County Sheriff's Divers underwater search and recovery expert Gene Ralston and his wife Sandy spent last week searching extensively. Unfortunately, with not with the results that we were looking for, but we know now where perhaps does not need to be covered as much. That team is now done, but deputies are still looking for Bobby on the surface of the water and on the shore. Also, the Utah Department of Public Safety is helping search in the water. And they didn't stop. They didn't sh take any breaks. They were never docked at shore anytime during the day, not even 
to eat a meal. And so is the local voodoo dive team. They've been out there every day and they'll be out there until he's found. They said that they are happy to be involved in helping. Now anyone with a boat or kayak can help look and that's what Bobby's family asks. Even, you know, 30 minutes. It's, it's eyes that are out there on the water. The family desperate to bring Bobby home, a shy, helpful, family-oriented teenager with a passion for cars. He loved mechanics. Every day since he could hold a, you know, hold a wrench, he was out in the garage and in the driveway with his uncle taking apart cars and putting cars together. And now, when you got him talking and got him to be playful, he was the, the cutest thing in the world. Just cherished memories left in his wake. Bobby's family says they're grateful to each and every person who helped with the search. Now, we do have a link to the family's GoFundMe page. It's on our website. They say that money will go towards a memorial and eventual burial costs. Well, another investigation underway this morning at Lake Mead after more human remains were found. Our sister station in Las Vegas, they report that this is the third set of remains found in the last three months. They were located at Boulder Beach, also known as Swim Beach, yesterday afternoon. Now, all of the bodies appear to have been discovered due to Lake Mead's receding shoreline as drought continues to affect the area. Turning to fire season, weeks of high heat and little rain being blamed for several blazes in the western United States. The Oak Fire, that's raging on near Yosemite National Park, now for its fifth consecutive day. The good news, firefighters, they believe they're finally starting to get things under control. This morning, uh, we reported 10% containment on the fire. Uh, tonight, we're reporting 16% containment. So, you know, it's not a huge number, but it's a pretty big percentage jump. The Oak Fire broke out quickly Friday, spreading over about 17,000 acres just west of Yosemite National Park. It's already destroyed more than 50 homes and other buildings, while forcing thousands of residents to evacuate. In the meantime, down in Texas, at least 20 homes have been damaged or completely destroyed in a grass fire that spread across a suburban Dallas field. It jumped from this spot to that spot just in a matter of seconds. And then everything went completely dark. I couldn't see anything from the smoke that was from all over here. I could barely see my hand in front of my face and I started choking. Investigators believe it may have been sparked by a lawnmower blade that struck an object on the ground. Well, hot and dry conditions, they also continue across Idaho. Northeast of Boise, near Salmon, firefighters still working to stop a fire from reaching homes. Over 800 firefighters are currently battling the Moose Fire. It's burning about 21 miles north of Salmon. But for now, flames are just burning timber and grass. This fire has burned more than 35,000 acres. At one point, flames, they were burning 1,000 feet per hour. Crews say the blaze is now 10% contained, though it could take until the end of the month before it reaches full containment. Also growing in the Salmon Chalice National Forest is the wood tick fire. It's burning almost 1,700 acres, just 27 miles northwest of Chalice. No containment yet on this fire, though they do expect full containment by September 1st. A reminder that some of the area trails are closed nearby due to that fire. Well, staying cool in these hot temperatures, it is the key this summer. In neighboring Oregon, an excessive heat warning. It's in place through Thursday night. Volunteers are out trying to keep people out of the heat, especially those who don't have a cool place to go home to. We can at least um, cool it down, put our eyes on people, get food and water and things like that in their system. The city of Portland also extending its local pool hours and for the Willamette River. Officials say more people trying to get in the water. They hope it'll help. Of course, they want to remind everyone going into the water that they need a personal flotation device. Yeah, always a good thing to remember when you're out on the water. And that's the place you're going to want to be today because it is going to be a toasty day, especially for our friends in Eastern Oregon. Mm -hmm. 105 for our friends in Ontario. Yeah, 105 over in Ontario. <laughs> Oregon getting hit with a heat wave right now. And so is Idaho and the Treasure Valley. Here in Boise, we're going to be very, very hot today. But as you can see, both Oregon and Idaho getting hit hard with that heat wave. 
108 degrees over in Medford expected again today. They were hit with that yesterday as well. 102 degrees in Portland, 102 in Redding as well. But one of the highest temperatures on this screen over in Boise and in the Treasure Valley, 102 degrees expected as the high today. Now for that smoke that we were dealing with yesterday, the Treasure Valley won't be dealing with very much smoke today. Most of that smoke from the Moose Fire is going to stick around Eastern Oregon and they're going to have a low to moderate amount of smoke in that area. Wednesday through Thursday, we're not going to see very much smoke right now. It's looking like so just be aware that that smoke still may make its way over to the Treasure Valley at some point as that uh, fire is just 10% contained. Now, future cash showing we can expect for the next few days. Low pressure up north into the south of us is bringing that high pressure into our area. We may see some clouds on Wednesday going into Thursday, but we're going to look relatively clear throughout the next couple days. We're going to have scorching hot temperatures with lots of sunshine with highs at or above 100 degrees, and we're not going to see any change of that through this weekend. Now, we're looking at 101 to 103 degrees in the Treasure Valley. 102 in Boise, 103 in Emmett, and 105, as we said earlier, in Ontario. Up in the mountains, we're looking at 92 degrees in McCall and 97 in Idaho City. Yeah, Stanley looking real nice today. All right, thank you, Vasily. 510 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Looking good, moving things along. It's what we like to see. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a shooting shuts down an airport in Dallas, Texas. What police are sharing about the incident this morning. And later, helping kids prepare for the upcoming school year. How you can lend a hand to families in need. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to a survey, one out of four of us don't know this about ourselves. The answer, our astrological sign. Yeah, I was going to say, I know my rising. What is it? Your rising, your moon, your eighth house. There's a lot of them going on. All right. Well, for today's question, the average person learns how to do this at age eight. Okay, folks, thinking caps on. What do you think it is? CBS 2's adventure weather local forecast showing us the temperatures over in Payette. 103 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 71 degrees tonight, but no relief expected. 105 degrees expected tomorrow near record temps over in Payette. And then up in the mountains in Cascade, 93 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight and it'll jump right back up 94 degrees in Cascade tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. 514 on your Tuesday. Police sharing more details in the Dallas Love Field Airport shooting. Now they arrested this woman, Portia Adufua. According to police, she got to Dallas Love Airfield on Monday morning, changed in the bathroom, and came out firing a gun at the ceiling. A witness shares what she saw. She basically came towards the middle of there. It was like kind of like, I got an announcement to make. And then she just basically had a hood and she pulled the gun from underneath her hood, fired the first shot up, and then it's kind of skyed after that. An officer shot Odufua in the leg. She was taken to the hospital. There are no other reported injuries, though it's not clear what motive there was for this incident. The airport suspended operations for several hours yesterday morning. There were delayed flights, which have resumed as of this morning. Well, the principal at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, has been put on administrative leave. Now, the attorney for Principal Mandy Gutierrez says the district placed her on leave with pay on Monday. Now, Gutierrez was the principal at the time of the May shooting at Robb Elementary. Now, this comes after a legislative committee found Gutierrez knew that a classroom door lock wasn't working and did not have it repaired. Now, during a district meeting, Uvalde parents say the principal and trustees aren't doing enough to protect them this fall. Now she needs to be gone, too. She needs to be gone. That principal needs to be gone. All of the school board needs to be gone because, as you see, they don't care. Most attendees left the meeting when another speaker suggested the tone of the discussion should change. Now, those families that walked out, they missed a presentation that trustees say answered security questions that they've been asking 
four weeks. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Just a month from now, if you can believe it, students and teachers will be back in the classroom. And CBS2 wants to ease that burden of the back to school shopping that's ahead. So we're teaming up with CapEd Credit Union and the Salvation Army for a back to school drive. Inflation, it's making some supplies more expensive and supply chain issues, making those items harder to come by. Now, it's more important than ever to donate to support local Idaho families. Our drive, it's running through August 12th. You can bring supplies or money to any CapEd branch in the Treasure Valley or in Twin Falls. Money can also be donated online. We do have a link at IdahoNews.com. With inflation still at a four decade high, the Fed is expected to announce a second consecutive three quarter point interest rate hike when it ends its latest policy meeting as of tomorrow. But with signs that the economy has started to slow, like jobless claims at an eight month high, that typically leads to the Fed to stop raising rates and possibly even cut them. Now, if rates do go up, it would make borrowing more expensive for everyone, companies and individuals included. Well, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot now sitting at over $800 million. That's the fourth largest prize in lotto history. Now, the popular cash option would pay a lump sum of about $470 million. There hasn't been a big winner in almost three months, though four ticket holders won at least $1 million in last week's drawing. Yeah, sadly, that was not me, obviously, still here today. <laughs> but my one of the big questions I love to ask, what would you do? if you ended up winning the lottery. That's a lot of money. <laughs> like, I don't even know what I would be doing at like right when I got it. But I mean, I'd take care of my family, you know, take care of my friends and then take care of myself, buy myself a nice car, maybe a nice house, something <laughs> like that. So it's a lot of money, though. I don't I don't even know. I can't fathom that much. money. Yeah, it is. You have till nine o'clock tonight to still buy that ticket. Yeah, we're waiting closely to see exactly who wins. Hoping someone in the gem state, but at least speaking of the gem state, it's a hot day ahead. It is going to be toasty, continuing to be toasty. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even pretty, pretty warm right now, and it's just after 5 a.m. in the morning. So what can we expect? Clear skies once again. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I'm loving, those blue skies. Yeah, above average temperatures right now. We're sitting at about 71 degrees right now here in Boise. Just a beautiful view of downtown here right before sunrise. We're looking at about a six mile an hour southerly wind. Feels like 71 degrees right now, so we're sticking true to form here and when you're heading out the door today we'll start to see it heat up pretty quickly here we're gonna see it jump up to 86 degrees by 11 a.m. very hot already by 1 o'clock it'll be 92 jumping up to our high today of 102 degrees by 5 p.m. we're hitting those triple digits and we're gonna hit them for a while this week I'll let you know about that in a second 102 degrees here in Boise 103 degrees over in Emmett and they're gonna be jumping up to 105 five degrees over in Ontario today. Very high temperatures over in Eastern Oregon. 101 down Mountain Home and then up in the mountains. 92 in McCall and 88 degrees in Stanley. Just a bit cooler in the mountains but still above average temperatures over there. Now for the extended forecast we're going to be sticking in those triple digit temperatures all week this week. 102 to 103 degrees pretty much all week up to Sunday and then Monday we'll jump down to 98 degrees so no relief expected over the next seven days just above average temperatures and then in the mountains we're looking at something very similar with temperatures almost 10 degrees or 10 degrees above the average very high temperatures in the forecast these coming weeks thank you Vasily 520 on your Tuesday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long a live look out there at I-84 everything running smoothly both on our main roads and secondary roads no matter where you're heading this morning so when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we head to break, here's today's traffic tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello, Idaho. Corporal Kyle Wills back with Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. So this week we're talking about wide turns. You know, a lot of people get confused when they turn at an intersection, whether that's a right turn or a left turn, what lane do I turn into or should I or could I turn into? The fact is in Idaho, we require that you turn into the closest lane available. So what that means is if you're making a right turn at a, at a red light, 
onto a two lane road, you're required to turn into that right lane first, establish yourself in that lane, and then if you need in the left lane, then go ahead and make that lane change over. Likewise, if you're making a left turn onto a two lane road, you're, or more, you're required to turn into that nearest lane first, establish yourself, and then move where you need to move to. So just remember that traffic tip Tuesday, turn into the closest lane for me. Buckle up, buckaroo, have a great day. All right, buckle up, you buckaroos. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning. A California county may be facing mask mandates once again. COVID cases are climbing. Why many are pushing back against the decision. Plus, the White House considering declaring a health emergency over monkeypox. Why an increase in cases has officials concerned. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 524 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. By the end of this week, L.A. County could once again be under a mask mandate. Now, Tom Waite reports that of the warnings that from officials and why some argue the return to mandates may be a bad move. I have mixed emotions on that. Francine Tucker and her daughter are not looking forward to the possibility of another mask mandate, but they're ready if it happens. I'm vaccinated. My daughter's vaccinated. So, I mean, if we have to, we have to, you know, just to keep everybody else safe. Last week, LA County Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer said a mask mandate would be reinstated if the county stayed in the high virus activity level for two consecutive weeks, as defined by the CDC. If those numbers hold, LA County would hit that two week milestone Thursday, and the mask mandate would come back on Friday. Of all the tools we have used in this pandemic to counter the spread of COVID, Indoor masking is one of the simplest and turns out to be very effective tools that we have that can counter rapid spread of the virus. The possibility of the return of the mandate prompted LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger to issue a public statement criticizing the move. Um, I felt it important for me to once again um, let people know my position. And my position is very simple, um, consistency and clarity. Um, the state is not mandating a masking uh, mandate for a, the state. And to do it in one county makes no sense. People get confused and they get frustrated. Of course, masking has become a red hot political issue. And the question becomes, will people comply? People are frustrated. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not going to going to follow. And for business owners, the mask mandate presents a host of challenges. Jennifer Fabre owns McLeod Ale and Pizza in Van Nuys. She's part of the Los Angeles County Business Federation, which opposes the mask mandate. It just seems like a lot to ask of us, you know, and it pits me against my employees. It pits my employees against our patrons. The Biden administration still considering an emergency declaration for monkeypox. Now, this comes as the CDC reports more than 3,000 cases in the U.S. The virus spreads mainly through skin to skin contact and can cause a fever and a rash. At least two cases in children have been reported here in the U.S., a toddler in California and an infant in Washington, D.C. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a country club in Boise at the center of some serious crimes. Why its general manager is now facing two felonies. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After your favorites of FBI Every Flavor, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the search continues for a teen who drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir, why the family is now turning to the community for help. And another set of remains uncovered at Lake Mead, what we know this morning about the third body found at the lake in just three months. Plus, wildfires continue to light up the western U.S. A look at some of the blazes burning across the west coast, including right here in Idaho. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now.
We're looking at a scorching hot day here in the Treasure Valley, but right now temperatures are definitely cooler. But here in Boise, it's already 71 degrees right now. Down in Mountain Home, it's 64 degrees, a little bit cooler down there. Over in Ontario, 68 degrees in Eastern Oregon. They're expecting a hot day today. And up in the mountains, 56 degrees over in McCall and 43 degrees right now in Stanley. Now, over the next few days, we're going to feel some pretty we're going to have some pretty cool or hotter temperatures and little to no clouds in the sky. I'll show you Tuesday, little to no clouds in the sky. We're going to see those um, clear skies here, but those clouds will start to roll in Wednesday through the morning, but they'll start to dissipate. Uh, by Wednesday evening and into Thursday, we'll see little to no clouds in the area as well. Now, high temperatures for today, 102 degrees here in Boise over in Emmett, 103 degrees expected there, 105 in Ontario expected, hottest part of the valley here and up in the mountains, 92 degrees in McCall. Oh, thank you, Vasily. Yeah, head to the mountains if you want some cooler conditions. It is 531 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there. More headlights making their way in, but nothing to slow you down this morning. No reports of anything out there on the road. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, this morning, a shocking story out of the Hillcrest Country Club. Its general manager charged with two felonies, one of them sexual in nature. Now, Max Dean Moreno was arrested last Thursday on one count of forcible penetration and one count of battery. According to the president of Hillcrest Country Club, the alleged assault happened after regular business hours on the Hillcrest property. He says they are cooperating with Boise police as they're working to make changes at their club. Now, his statement reads in part, quote, rest assured the board is addressing this issue in a timely and professional manner and will continue to focus our attention on preserving a safe environment for our members, their families and our employees, end quote. Now, Marino has been suspended. Brandy Ramirez is taking over in the interim as general manager. We've reached out to Boise police for information, but have yet to hear back as of news time. Well, this morning, police are looking for a person behind some vandalism in a Boise neighborhood. Take a look. This is near Shadow Hills Elementary School. Someone painted swastikas on the bike path near Sloan Street and Rowe Avenue. Boise police say someone told them about it back on Saturday. The Ada County Highway District will clean it up later this morning. The person who did this could be charged with malicious harassment. And on to continuing coverage now. It's been a full week since a Boise teen named Bobby was thrown from his jet ski and drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir. Now local law enforcement are now suspending their underwater search. CBS 2's Angela Kernel shares how family is now calling on volunteers from the community for help. Our family needs him home because this is where he belongs and we need to be able to put him, let him rest. 16-year-old Bobby Sitchililik's family is still searching the waters of Lucky Peak each day with their own boats. We know he's there. None of us are going to stop, even if it's just two or three or five or seven people or if there's 50 people, you know, there's there will be somebody out there looking for him until we do. Ada County Sheriff's Divers underwater search and recovery expert Gene Ralston and his wife Sandy spent last week searching extensively. Unfortunately, with not the, with the results that we were looking for, but we know now where perhaps does not need to be covered as much. That team is now done, but deputies are still looking for Bobby on the surface of the water and on the shore. Also, the Utah Department of Public Safety is helping search in the water. And they didn't stop. They didn't sh take any breaks. They were never docked at shore any time during the day, not even to eat a meal. And so is the local voodoo dive team. They've been out there every day and they'll be out there until he's found. They said that they are happy to be involved in helping. Now anyone with a boat or kayak can help look, and that's what Bobby's family asks even, you know, 30 minutes. It's it's eyes that are out there on the water. The family desperate to bring Bobby home, a shy, helpful, family-oriented teenager with a passion for cars. He loved mechanics. Every day since he could hold a, you know, hold a wrench, he was out in the garage and in the driveway with his uncle taking apart cars and putting cars together. And now when you got him talking and got him to be playful, he was the the cutest thing in the world. Just cherished memories left in his wake. Bobby's family says they're very grateful to every single person who helped with the search. 
We do have a link to the family's GoFundMe page that's on our website. They say the money will go towards a memorial and eventual burial costs. Well, another investigation underway at Lake Mead after more human remains were found. Our sister station in Las Vegas reports this is the third set of remains found in the last three months. Now, they were located at Boulder Beach, also known as Swim Beach, yesterday afternoon. All of the bodies appear to have been discovered due to Lake Mead's receding shoreline as drought continues to affect the area. Turning now to fire season this morning, weeks of high heat and little rain being blamed for several blazes across the western United States. The Oak Fire raging near Yosemite National Park is now in its fifth consecutive day. The good news though, firefighters, they believe they're finally starting to get things under control. This morning, uh, we reported 10% containment on the fire. Uh, tonight, we're reporting 16% containment. So, you know, it's not a huge number, but it's a pretty big percentage jump. The Oak Fire, it broke out quickly Friday, and it spread to over 17,000 acres just west of Yosemite National Park. It's already destroyed more than 50 homes and other buildings while forcing thousands to evacuate. Well, in the meantime, in Texas, at least 20 homes have been damaged or completely destroyed in a grass fire that spread across a suburban Dallas field. It jumped from this spot to that spot just in a matter of seconds. And then everything went completely dark. I couldn't see anything from the smoke that was from all over here. I could barely see my hand in front of my face and I started choking. Yeah, you can see how bone dry that grass is. Investigators, they believe it may have been started from a spark from a lawnmower blade that struck an object on the ground. Well, hot and dry conditions, they continue across Idaho, northeast of Boise, near Salmon. Firefighters still trying to stop a fire from reaching homes. Over 800 firefighters are battling the Moose Fire. It's burning about 21 miles north of Salmon. The fire has burned more than 35,000 acres. At one point, flames were burning 1,000 feet per hour. Crews say this blaze is now 10% contained. It could take up until the end of next month before they reach full containment. Also growing in the Salmon Chalice National Forest is the Wood Tick Fire. It's now burning 1,700 acres, 27 miles northwest of Chalice. We're looking at zero containment as of this morning, though they do expect full containment by September 1st and a reminder that some of the trails in the area are closed due to safety. Well, staying cool in these hot temperatures, it is key this summer in neighboring Oregon. An excessive heat watch is warning. Part of me is in place through Thursday night as volunteers are trying to keep people out of the heat, especially those who don't have a cool place to go home to. We can at least um, cool it down, put our eyes on people, get food and water and things like that in their system. The city of Portland also extending its hours for local pools and the Willamette River. Officials say people are trying to get in the water and they hope that this will ultimately help. Of course, they want to remind everyone that they need a personal flotation device before heading out in the water. I was going to say personal flotation advice. Well, that's yeah. that's a device. OK, so, you know, you got it covered in there. But that water looking very nice even this uh -huh. early this morning. I know it's going to be another hot day on tap. So right now, at least for the next couple of hours, it's your time to get outside before finally that sun starts shining and the heat starts pounding down once again. Yeah, that heat is going to be harsh today. We're going to be experiencing triple digit temperatures not only today, but for the next few days as well. And the, uh, this heat wave today it is going to be lasting over the next few days across the western United States. 108 degrees again in southern Oregon over in Medford. 102 degrees in Portland as well. Oregon getting hit hard by that heat wave. 98 in Salt Lake and 90 down in Vegas. And then as you can see, one of the highest temperatures up on your screen, 102 degrees over in Boise today. Now that smoke from the Moose Fire is moving away from the Treasure Valley. It's starting to move into southeastern Idaho and will continue to stay in southeastern Idaho as well. We may see moderate to low smoke in the Treasure Valley area on Wednesday, but it's looking pretty clear right now. Now, future cast showing us what we can expect over the next few days 
and that low pressure up north and to the southeast of us is still pushing that high pressure into our area, bringing out those clear skies and those high temperatures we've been enjoying over the last few days. Now, there may be some spot showers in the mountains, but we're looking pretty clear in the valley, scorching hot temperatures with lots of sunshine, and the highs will be at or above 100 degrees all week this week and no changes through the weekend as well. High temperatures today, we're looking at 102 to 103 degrees around the Treasure Valley, down Mountain Home, 101 degrees expected there and 105 degrees over in Ontario, and then up in the mountains, 92 degrees in McCall. Yeah, folks, not out of the woods just yet. Stay cool today. It is 540 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything looking good, rolling on along. What we like to see on your morning commute, nothing to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is the average person learns how to do this at age eight. Vasily, what are you thinking? I've been going with my gut over the past few days and the first thing that <laughs> came to my head was singing or, learn, or learning an instrument. I feel like I was doing that in like second, third grade was when like they was first introduced to me. So that's what I'm thinking, but it really could be anything. Yeah, no, it, this, I mean, do you learn a lot in that age group? I know that around eight was when I actually did learn how to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. So honestly, you could be right on with that. It's also when I started, um, you know, woodworking, started kind of being that's able to one. loose use some of those, um, some of those, I guess, not high powered or but some power tools around the house, that sort of thing. Um, Jerry says riding a bike. Ooh, that's a great one too. Yeah, I was gonna say you gotta learn at some point. I remember being very scared, but it pays off, especially. Have you been on the green belt, by the way, yet, Vasily? Yes, I have, yeah, oh. beautiful. Let's say you need to learn how to ride a bike just so you can go enjoy that. Ed says tying their shoes. Ooh, that's hmm. a good one I too. think I can't remember how old I was when yeah, I learned how I to tie remember. my shoes. I can't remember when I ditched the Velcros. Huh? <laughs> exactly. It's been, it's been a little while. All right. Darren says parallel parking <laughs> their Hot Wheels cars. Yeah. So I guess parallel parking. I'm, I've just, I just, I'll it put it out there. Everyone Hot needs to trainers. know. <laughs> Start them young guys. Get them going. Thank you, Darren. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you still have another hour, 15 minutes to guess on our Facebook page and our Twitter. We'll read some more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer right before CBS this morning. <laughs> Love that. Coming up on CBS 2 News, trying to find a new home for hundreds of beagles. What's next for these dogs after they were rescued from a facility in California? CBS 2's adventure weather local forecast showing us the temperatures over in Payette. Blazing hot temperatures over there, 103 degrees expected today. That'll drop to 71 degrees tonight and jump right up to 105 degrees tomorrow. Very high temperatures over in the western part of the valley. Now in, the Cas in Cascade, 93 degrees expected today. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight and jump right back up to 94 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, hundreds of beagles looking for a new home this morning. They're being rescued from a facility in California that sold them to a medical testing lab. Now, Nicole Comstock has more on the rescue and what's next for these dogs. They're bursting at the seams with beagles, but the 200 dogs they're taking in here at Priceless Pets in Chino Hills are just a small batch of the 4,000 beagles who were freed from a Virginia breeding facility that sold dogs like these to medical testing labs. We were able to intercept them prior to them being tested on, so we are thankful for that at least. They never had to endure all that. But this beagle with a little mama belly did have to endure breeding and branding. She has letters tattooed inside her ear. As you can see here, she's obviously a little nervous. But she doesn't have to worry anymore. The Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against that breeding facility in May, alleging dozens of animal welfare violations. The company denied the allegations, but announced it was closing that facility and placing the dogs with the Humane Society. All those large companies like Procter & Gamble, they do test on animals. Tide, L'Oreal, Dawn, they are all tested on animals. So making better decisions when it comes to purchasing our products is the best way to help. You can also help by giving these deserving dogs loving homes. The beagles are all between one and five years old. They're full of spunk. You want to come out? 
do want to come out. And they're still sweet as can be even after all they've been through. Their breed is amazing. Their disposition's great. They're usually good with kids. They're good with other dogs. But these ones do have those needs. They are timid. They're scared. They don't know what it's like to be a dog. So they need adopters who are capable of giving them that time and that patience to learn how to be a dog. Oh, my heart just breaks for them. 4,000 beagles. Wow. All right. Well, let's switch gears. Let's talk about the weather because obviously I could talk about those little cuties all day. <laughs> so it's going to be hot. 105 for the day, well, at least out in Ontario, mm -hmm. eastern or, or pardon me, eastern Oregon, um, as well as southwestern Idaho looking very toasty today. So if we're looking for relief, is there anywhere that we can find it today? Yeah, I mean, you can hit the river today <laughs> to cool off, uh, turn on that AC, find some of the cooling centers around here in Idaho because it's going to be a scorcher today. It's already pretty hot for the morning. 71 degrees right now here in Boise as we see the sun start to rise this morning. South uh, southerly wind of six miles per hour right now, so just a cool breeze to start your morning. But we're sitting at 71 degrees right now, and we'll start heating up quickly today. As you head out the door, you'll notice it'll start to heat up by 11 o'clock, 86 degrees expected by then. Jump up to 92 degrees by 1 o'clock, jumping all the way to our high today of 102 degrees. We're expecting 100 degree temperatures not only today, but for the rest of the week. I'll let you know a little bit more about that in a second. But 102 degrees here in Boise, 103 over in Emmett, and 101 down in Mountain Home. Over in Ontario, they're expecting 105 degrees today, scorching hot temperatures over there. And then up in the mountains, about 10 degrees above the average there, 92 degrees in McCall, 88 degrees in Stanley, and 97 degrees in Idaho City. Now, for the rest of the week here in the Treasure Valley, extended forecast shown us triple digit temperatures throughout the week this week. Today we're starting with 102 degrees and on Wednesday as well 102 but we'll jump up to 103 both on Thursday and Saturday this week. Monday will drop back down from the triple digits at, but it's still going to be hot 98 degrees on Monday. And then in the mountains we're looking at scorching hot temperatures as well 10 degrees above the average on Thursday, Friday and Saturday and then we'll drop back down going into Monday around 89 degrees. So scorching hot temperatures both here in the Treasure Valley and in the mountains. Be safe out there, folks. All right, thank you, Vasily. 549 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It's looking good out there. No reports of anything to slow you down on your Tuesday morning commute. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, more women taking an interest in whiskey. Why the once male dominated industry is now seeing a shift. And here's our chime in photo of the day. This is from Peg. She says this is a great horned owl feather at her place. Love to see that. How neat. Thank you for sharing it with us, Peg. To submit your photos, you can head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 552 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Scotland, it's home to 138 active whiskey, whiskey distilleries. Now, they attract a record number of tourists right before the pandemic, almost 2.2 million. And as the overall popularity of Scotch grows, more of those visitors are women. Now, CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports from Isla, Scotland on the trend. Thank you. Kim Mabus traveled from Philadelphia to the Glenlivet Distillery in Northeast Scotland to buy a few bottles she can only get here. Pretty big Scotch fan. I have a nice collection at home. These days, she's enjoying it with a more diverse group. So many friends of mine have started drinking whiskey, female friends. It's, it's crazy. A 2020 study from the market research company MRI Simmons shows more than a third of whiskey drinkers are now women. At Ardbeg Distillery on the Scottish island of Isla, Visitor Center Manager Jackie Thompson estimates the percentage of women guests drinking whiskey has quadrupled since she entered the business 25 years ago. And she's observed a difference in how women and men approach scotch. I see with women often, uh, they have a great appreciation of sticking their noses into whiskey in order to enjoy 
the flavour of whisky. Um, men maybe tend to go straight for the palate, whereas women go for the scent and the aroma of a whisky to appreciate it. Women aren't just drinking whisky, they're making it. The Scotch Whisky Association estimates 40% of this country's 11,000 industry employees are female, and they're breaking the glass ceiling in what used to be a male-dominated field. Kelsey McKechnie was the youngest woman named an apprentice malt master for Balveni Distillery at the age of 24. If you look back in time, women just weren't in these roles and, and now they are. She sees a future with more women calling the shots in an industry that just keeps getting bigger. The Scotch Whiskey Association says every second, 44 bottles of Scotland's national drink are exported, with four of those bottles headed for the U.S. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Isla, Scotland. Well, back here in the Treasure Valley, we're getting ready for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. It's a month away. The pilots, they're preparing to fly at Ann Morrison Park. Now, Greg Lindsay is a commercial hot air balloon pilot down in Arizona. He's been flying at the Spirit of Boise since 2018 and says the founders, Lori Spencer and her late husband, Scott, are the reason he keeps coming back to Boise each and every year. We do 20 events a year. If I had to strip down to five events, that would be one that I would always come to. Mark your calendars. This year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, it's August 31st to September 4th at Ann Morrison Park. Now, the city of Nampa, changing, changing gears, wants to spruce things up with a new sculpture for Lloyd Square in downtown. City leaders are searching for an artist to now take on that project. Now, they want it to be an interactive sculpture. It should celebrate Nampa's culture and history, as well as be durable and low maintenance. Now, the budget for this artwork is about $90,000. The deadline for artists to submit their ideas, it's on September 2nd. And looking ahead, an exciting week scheduled here in the Treasure Valley. A couple events you should know about. The 2022 San Ignacio Festival, it's at the Basque Block starting Friday at 5 o'clock. It's a fun time and runs through Monday evening. And the County and County Fair is Thursday through Sunday. Now, if you buy tickets early, it's just $6 for adults, $4 for kids 12 and under. Two more bucks a ticket if you do buy it at the gate. Now, on Sunday this year, the fair will be putting on their Latino Festival. So much fun. All right. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a country club in Boise at the center of some serious crimes. Why its general manager now facing two felonies. Plus a shooting at a Dallas airport in Texas. What police are sharing about the incident as of this morning. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather. They continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We have your headlines coming up at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio. 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the search continues for a teen who drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir, why the family is now turning to the community for help. Plus, another set of remains uncovered at Lake Mead. What we know this morning about the third body found in the last three months. And later, wildfires continuing to light up the western U.S. A look at some of the blazes burning across the west, including right here in Idaho. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A beautiful live look of our sunrise on downtown Boise. It is Tuesday, July 26, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson, joined by Vasily Varlamos. And Vasily, another hot day is on tap. Temperatures right now are mild, but again, they're continuing to creep upward as those triple digit temperatures just continue. Yeah, those triple digit temperatures are set to continue this week and today is going to be the first day of a long stretch of those triple digit temperatures. Now, right now, temperatures are cooler, about 70 degrees here in Boise, which is above the average for right now. 64 down in Mountain Home, a little bit cooler and 65 in Ontario. And then in the mountains, 54 degrees in McCall right now and 41 degrees in Stanley. Now, future cash showers we can expect over the next few days in terms of cloud cover 
Tuesday is going to be very, very clear. We're going to have little to no clouds, but those clouds will start to roll in on Wednesday. Wednesday morning, we'll see some spot clouds, but those will start to fade as we enter Wednesday evening and into Thursday. We'll have very clear skies then. So temperatures today, 102 to 103 degrees here in uh, 102 in Boise, 103 over in Emmett, 105 degrees over in Ontario. They're experiencing high temperatures over there. And then up in the mountains, 92 degrees in McCall, 88 degrees over in Stanley, and 97 degrees in Idaho City. Oh, it is a toasty day ahead. Thank you, Vasily. 601 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good out there this morning. You are taking a live look of your morning commute, but not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. This morning, a shocking story out of Hillcrest Country Club. Its general manager charged with two felonies, one of them sexual in nature. Now, Max Dean Moreno was arrested last Thursday on one count of forcible penetration and one count of battery. According to the president of Hillcrest Country Club, the alleged assault they say happened after regular business hours on the Hillcrest property. Now, he says they are cooperating with Boise police as they're working to make changes at the club. Now his statement reads in part, quote, rest assured the board is addressing this issue in a timely and professional manner and will continue to focus our attention on preserving a safe environment for our members, their families and our employees, end quote. Now Moreno has been suspended. Randy Ramirez is taking over in the interim as general manager. Well, this morning, police looking for the person who's behind some vandalism in a Boise neighborhood. Take a look. This is near Shadow Hills Elementary School. Someone painted swastikas on the bike path near Sloan Street and Row Avenue. Boise police say someone told them about it back on Saturday. The Ada County Highway District will clean it up later this morning. Now, the person who did this could be charged with malicious harassment. Continuing coverage now, it's been a full week since a Boise teen named Bobby was thrown from his jet ski and drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir. Local law enforcement are suspending their underwater search. Now, CBS 2's Angela Kernel shares how the family is now calling on volunteers for the community for help. Our family needs him home because this is where he belongs and we need to be able to put him, let him rest. 16-year-old Bobby Sichelilik's family is still searching the waters of Lucky Peak each day with their own boats. We know he's there. None of us are going to stop, even if it's just two or three or five or seven people, or if there's 50 people, you know, there's there will be somebody out there looking for him until we do. Ada County Sheriff's Divers underwater search and recovery expert Gene Ralston and his wife Sandy spent last week searching extensively. Unfortunately, with not the, with the results that we were looking for, but we know now where perhaps does not need to be covered as much. That team is now done, but deputies are still looking for Bobby on the surface of the water and on the shore. Also, the Utah Department of Public Safety is helping search in the water. And they didn't stop. They didn't sh take any breaks. They were never docked at shore any time during the day, not even to eat a meal. And so is the local voodoo dive team. They've been out there every day and they'll be out there until he's found. They said that they are happy to be involved in helping. Now anyone with a boat or kayak can help look, and that's what Bobby's family asks. Even, you know, 30 minutes. It's it's eyes that are out there on the water. The family desperate to bring Bobby home, a shy, helpful, family-oriented teenager with a passion for cars. He loved mechanics. Every day since he could hold a, you know, hold a wrench, he was out in the garage and in the driveway with his uncle taking apart cars and putting cars together. And now when you got him talking and got him to be playful, he was the, the cutest thing in the world just cherished memories left in his wake. It's just so heartbreaking. Now, Bobby's family says they're grateful to every person who's helped with the search. We do have a link to the family's GoFundMe page that's on their website. Now, they say the money will go towards a memorial and eventual burial costs. Well, another investigation is underway this morning at Lake Mead after more human remains were found. Now, our sister station in Vegas reports that this is the third set of remains found in just three months. They were located at Boulder Beach, also known as Swim Beach, yesterday afternoon. Now, all of the bodies do appear to have been discovered due to Lake Mead's receding shoreline as drought it continues to affect the area. 
Turning now to fire season this morning, weeks of high heat and little rain being blamed for several blazes starting across the western United States. The Oak Fire, that's the one raging near Yosemite National Park. It's on its fifth consecutive day, but there is some good news. Firefighters, they believe they're finally starting to get it under control. This morning, uh, we reported 10% containment on the fire. Uh, tonight, we're reporting 16% containment. So, you know, it's not a huge number, but it's a pretty big percentage jump. The Oak Fire, it broke out quickly Friday, spreading to over 17,000 acres just west of Yosemite National Park. Now, this fire has already destroyed more than 50 homes and other buildings, while forcing thousands to evacuate. Well, in the meantime, in Texas, at least 20 homes have been damaged or completely destroyed in a grass fire. You can see it spread across a suburban Dallas field. It jumped from this spot to that spot just in a matter of seconds. And then everything went completely dark. I couldn't see anything from the smoke that was from all over here. I could barely see my hand in front of my face and I started choking. Yeah, dry conditions are to thank investigators. They believe it also may have been started from a spark from a lawnmower blade striking something on the ground. Well, hot and dry conditions, they continue across the state of Idaho, northeast of Boise near Salmon. Firefighters are trying to stop a fire from currently reaching homes. Over 800 firefighters are currently battling the moose fire. It's burning 21 miles north of Salmon. This fire has now burned more than 35,000 acres. At one point, fire managers tell us that flames were burning 1,000 feet per hour. Now, crews say this is about 10% contained at this time, though it could take until next month before they reach full containment. Also growing in the Salmon Chalice National Forest is the Wood Tick Fire. It's burned almost 1,700 acres, about 27 miles northwest of Chalice. 0% containment as of this morning, though they do expect full containment by September 1st. And a reminder that trails are closed nearby due to safety. Well, staying cool in these hot temperatures, it is the key this summer. And in neighboring Oregon, an excessive heat warning is in place through Thursday night. Volunteers are out trying to help people beat the heat, especially those who don't have a cool place to go home to. We can at least um, cool it down, put our eyes on people, get food and water and things like that in their system. The city of Portland also extending its hours for local pools. Yeah, that looks inviting right about now. They say they're doing that as well for the Willamette River. Officials say more people are trying to get in the water. They're hoping this helps. And of course, they want to remind everyone that if you're going to be in the water, you need a personal flotation device, just like those kids mm -hmm. on the screen. Stay safe out there. It is going to be really one of the only ways to stay cool other than staying close to that air conditioning, which is going to be my plan for the day. So, Vasily, tell me more about what we can expect. Yeah, the AC may be crucial today because it's going to be a hot one, not only today, but over the next few days as well. High temperatures across the western United States right now, as we just heard, there is a heat wave going on in Oregon and temperatures are showing th just that 102 degrees in Portland and south of that 108 degrees in Medford today. They experienced that yesterday as well. High temperatures over there in southern Oregon. Over here in Boise, as you can see, one of the highest temperatures on the board here, 102 degrees expected to be the high here in the Treasure Valley. That smoke that we were dealing with yesterday should move eastbound where so southeastern Idaho is going to have to deal with a moderate amount of smoke from that moose fire that is about 10% contained as of now. Now and Wednesday, we'll start to see it dissipate even more as the but we will we may see it on Thursday. We'll, we're yet to see if it's going to end up spreading to the Treasure Valley. We'll see how that wildfire ends up working here in the next few days. But Futurecast showing us the uh, next few days in terms of pressure, low pressure up north into the south of us is pushing that high pressure into our area, which is bringing out those hot temperatures. We will be seeing not only today, but for the next few days as well. Scorch hot temperatures and lots of sunshine. High temperatures at or above 100 degrees expected today and over the next few days. 102 expected here in Boise, 105 expected over in Eastern Oregon in Ontario and up in the mountains, 92 degrees expected in McCall today. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It is 610 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Everything looking good.
no, nothing to report. So let's get on with the show. When you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a shooting shuts down an airport in Dallas, Texas. What police are sharing about the incident as of this morning. And later, helping kids prepare for the upcoming school year. How you can help lend a hand to families in need. And don't forget about our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. That was, according to a survey, one out of four of us don't know this about ourselves. That answer, our astrological sign. Yeah, has to do a little bit with your birth date, if you didn't know. All right, now for today's question. The average person learns how to do this at the age of eight. Okay, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2's Adventure Weather Local Forecast showing us the temperatures over in Payette today. 103 degrees expected as the high. That should drop to 71 degrees tonight. And it's going to jump right back up to 105 degrees expected tomorrow. Blazing temperatures over in the western part of the valley. Now up in Cascade, 93 degrees expected as the high. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight. And it'll jump right back up as well. 94 degrees expected as the high tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. 615 on your Tuesday. Well, police sharing more details in a Dallas airport shooting. They have now arrested a woman. We'll show you her. This is Portia Odufua. Now, according to police, she got to the Dallas Lovefield airfield on Monday morning, changed in a bathroom and came out firing a gun at the ceiling. A witness shares what she saw. She basically came towards the middle of there. It was like kind of like, I got an announcement to make. And then she just basically had a hood and she pulled the gun from underneath the hood, fired the first shot up, and then it's kind of skyed after that. An officer shot Odufua in the leg. She was taken to a hospital. Luckily, no other injuries were reported. It is unclear this morning what the motive for this incident was for. The airport did suspend operations for several hours. There were delayed flights, which have resumed as of this morning. Well, the principal at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, has been put on administrative leave. The attorney for Principal Mandy Gutierrez says the district placed her on leave with pay back on Monday. Now, Gutierrez was the principal at the time of May's shooting at Robb Elementary School. This comes after a legislative committee found that Gutierrez knew that a locked a classroom door lock wasn't working and chose not to have it repaired. Now, during a district meeting, Uvalde parents say the principal and trustees aren't doing enough to protect them come fall. That she needs to be gone, too. She needs to be gone. That principal needs to be gone. All of the school board needs to be gone because, as you see, they don't care. Most attendees left the meeting when another speaker suggested the tone of the discussion should change. Those families that walked out say missed a presentation that trustees say answered security questions that they've been asking about for weeks. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, a month from now, students and teachers will be back in the classroom, if you can believe it. And CBS2 wants to help ease the burden of back to school shopping. So we're teaming up with CapEd Credit Union and the Salvation Army for a back to school drive. Inflation making some supplies more expensive and supply chain issues making those items harder to come by. Now it's more important than ever to donate to support local Idaho families. Our drive, it runs through August 12th. You can bring supplies or money to any CapEd branch in the Treasure Valley or in Twin Falls. Money can also be donated online. We do have a link on IdahoNews.com. With inflation still at a four decade high, the Fed is expected to announce a second consecutive three point quarter interest rate hike when it ends its latest policy meeting set for tomorrow. But with signs the economy has started to slow, like jobless claims at an eight month high, that typically leads the Fed to stop raising rates and possibly even cut them. Now, if rates do go up, it would make borrowing more expensive for everyone, companies and individuals included. Well, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot now sitting at a cool $800 million. It's the fourth largest prize in lotto history. Now, the popular cash option would pay a lump sum of about $470 million. Now, there hasn't been a big winner in three months, though four ticket holders did win at least $1 million in last week's drawing. 
Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you have till nine o'clock tonight, yeah, to get that in. Gosh. Well, at 9 o'clock at night, it's still going to be toasty. Mm -hmm. Once again, actually probably similar temperatures to what we're experiencing now. And it is at least a mild start to our morning. If you want to get out, the sun is starting to shine. I love our sunrises lately. Mm -hmm. Beautiful start to our summer day. But that heat is going to come roaring in once we start to feel that sunshine beating down on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to start rolling in quickly. Right now we're on the cooler side, but it's definitely going to start heating up around the midday today. Around noon, 11 o'clock is where it's going to start really picking up. But right now we're at a cool 70 degrees right now, a little bit above average for this time of day. We're looking at a southeasterly wind of around six miles per hour, so a little bit breezy this morning, but not too much of a wind for you as the sun rises here in downtown Boise. Now, when you're heading out the door this morning, it's going to start heating up. As I said, we're going to be sitting around the mid 80s at around 11 o'clock, 86 degrees, in fact, and then we'll start jumping up incrementally at around 1 p.m. it'll be 93 degrees jumping up to our high today of 102 degrees scorching hot temperatures here in the treasure valley and we can expect that over the next few days as well 102 degrees expected today here in boise over in emmett 103 degrees down in mountain home 101 degrees expected there and over in ontario hottest part of the valley 105 degrees expected in eastern oregon and then up in the mountains 92 degrees expected in mccall now for the extended forecast here in the Treasure Valley, we're going to be sitting in the 100 degree range all week this week, Wednesday and Friday, or, when, or Thursday and Saturday, looking like the hottest days this week at 103 degrees and 98 degrees on Monday. So we'll jump out of those 100 degree temperatures then. And in the mountains, we're looking about the same as well, same trend, 93, 94 degrees expected as highs in the mountains with temperatures above 10 degrees above the average. Yeah, well above that average mark. Thank you, Vasily. 620 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning on both our main roads and secondary roads. No reports to slow you down. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we head to break, here's today's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello, Idaho. Corporal Kyle Wills back with Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. So this week we're talking about wide turns. You know, a lot of people get confused when they turn at an intersection, whether that's a right turn or a left turn. What lane do I turn into or should I or could I turn into? The fact is in Idaho, we require that you turn into the closest lane available. So what that means is if you're making a right turn at a, at a red light onto a two lane road, you're required to turn into that right lane first, establish yourself in that lane. And then if you need in the left lane, then go ahead and make that lane change over. Likewise, if you're making a left turn onto a two lane road you're, or more, you're required to turn into that nearest lane first, establish yourself and then move where you need to move to. So just remember that traffic tip Tuesday, turn into the closest lane for me. Buckle up buckaroo. Have a great day. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a California county may be facing mask mandates once again as COVID cases climb. Why many are now pushing back against the decision. Plus the White House considering declaring a health emergency over monkeypox. Why an increase in cases now has officials concerned. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 624 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. By the end of this week, LA County could once again be under a mask mandate. Tom Waite reports on the warnings from officials and why some argue the return to the mandate may be a bad move. I have mixed emotions on that. Francine Tucker and her daughter are not looking forward to the possibility of another mask mandate, but they're ready if it happens. I'm vaccinated. My daughter's vaccinated. So, I mean, if we have to, we have to you know, just to keep everybody else safe. Last week, LA County Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer said a mask mandate would be reinstated if the county stayed in the high virus activity level for two consecutive weeks as defined by the CDC. If those numbers hold, LA County would hit that two week milestone Thursday and the mask mandate would come back on Friday. Of all the tools we have used in this pandemic to counter the spread of COVID, 
Indoor masking is one of the simplest and turns out to be very effective tools that we have that can counter rapid spread of the virus. The possibility of the return of the mandate prompted LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger to issue a public statement criticizing the move. Um, I felt it important for me to once again um, let people know my position. My position is very simple. Um, consistency and clarity. Um, the state is not mandating a masking uh, mandate for a, the state. And to do it in one county it makes no sense. People get confused and they get frustrated. Of course, masking has become a red hot political issue. And the question becomes, will people comply? People are frustrated. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not going to gonna follow. And for business owners, the mask mandate presents a host of challenges. Jennifer Fabre owns McLeod Ale and Pizza in Van Nuys. She's part of the Los Angeles County Business Federation, which opposes the mask mandate. It just seems like a lot to ask of us, you know, and it pits me against my employees. It pits my employees against our patrons. The Biden administration is still considering an emergency declaration for monkeypox. Now, it comes as the CDC reports more than 3,000 cases in the U.S. The virus, it spreads mainly through skin-to-skin -skin contact and can cause a fever or rash. At least two cases have been reported in children in the U.S., a toddler in California and an infant in Washington, D.C. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a country club in Boise at the center of some serious crimes. How the general manager now facing two felonies. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the search continues for a teen who drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir. Why his family is now turning to the community for help. Plus, another set of remains uncovered at Lake Mead. What we know this morning about the third body at the lake in just three months. Plus, wildfires continuing to light up the western U.S. A look at some of the blazes burning across the west, including right here in Idaho. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Here's a look at temperatures right now across the Treasure Valley over in Boise, 70 degrees right now, and it'll start jumping up quickly today. We're expecting high temperatures across the Treasure Valley today, 64 degrees down in Mountain Homes, 65 over in Ontario right now, and up in the mountains, 54 degrees in McCall. Now, future cash showing us what we can expect over the next few days in terms of cloud cover, little to no cloud cover on Tuesday, but once Wednesday comes along, we may see some morning cloud into the afternoon but once the evening comes along we should see another clear night and a clear day expected today here in Boise 102 as the high here over in Emmett 103 degrees expected as the high 105 over in Ontario and up in the mountains 92 degrees over in McCall if you have a pup make sure you take them out for a walk earlier this morning because it'll heat up quickly 76 degrees by 9 a.m. by noon it'll be 89 degrees jumping up to our high today by 5 p.m. of 102 degrees. Thank you, Vasily. It is 631 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Everything looking good. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. This morning, a shocking story out of Hillcrest Country Club. Its general manager charged with two felonies, one of them sexual in nature. Now, Max Dean Moreno was arrested last Thursday on one count of forcible penetration and one count of battery. According to the president of Hillcrest Country Club, the alleged assault happened after regular business hours on the Hillcrest property. He says they are cooperating with Boise police and are working to make changes at their club. Now, the statement says in part, quote, rest assured the board is addressing this issue in a timely and professional manner and will continue to focus our attention on preserving a safe environment for our members, their families and our employees. Marino has since been suspended. Brandy Ramirez is taking over as the general manager in the interim. We've reached out to Boise police for more information, but have yet to hear back as of this morning. Well, police are looking for a person behind some vandalism in a Boise neighborhood. Take a look. 
This is near Shadow Hills Elementary School. Someone painted swastikas on the bike path near Sloan Street and Row Avenue. Boise police say someone told them about it back on Saturday. Now the Ada County Highway District will clean it up later this morning. The person who did this, police say, could be charged with malicious harassment. Now to continuing coverage, it's been a full week since a Boise teen named Bobby was thrown from his jet ski and drowned at Lucky Peak Reservoir. Local law enforcement have suspended their underwater search. But as CBS 2's Angela Kerndl shares, it's how the family is now calling on volunteers from the community for help. Our family needs him home because this is where he belongs and we need to be able to put him, let him rest. 16-year-old Bobby Sichelilik's family is still searching the waters of Lucky Peak each day with their own boats. We know he's there. None of us are going to stop, even if it's just two or three or five or seven people, or if there's 50 people, you know, there's there will be somebody out there looking for him until we do. Ada County Sheriff's Divers underwater search and recovery expert Gene Ralston and his wife Sandy spent last week searching extensively. Unfortunately, with not the, with the results that we were looking for, but we know now where perhaps does not need to be covered as much. That team is now done, but deputies are still looking for Bobby on the surface of the water and on the shore. Also, the Utah Department of Public Safety is helping search in the water. And they didn't stop. They didn't sh take any breaks. They were never docked at shore any time during the day, not even to eat a meal. And so is the local voodoo dive team. They've been out there every day and they'll be out there until he's found. They said that they are happy to be involved in helping. Now anyone with a boat or kayak can help look and that's what Bobby's family asks. Even, you know, 30 minutes. It's it's eyes that are out there on the water. The family desperate to bring Bobby home, a shy, helpful, family-oriented teenager with a passion for cars. He loved mechanics. Every day since he could hold a, you know, hold a wrench, he was out in the garage and in the driveway with his uncle taking apart cars and putting cars together. And now when you got him talking and got him to be playful, he was the, the cutest thing in the world. Just cherished memories left in his wake. Bobby's family says that they're grateful to every single person helping with the search. Now we do have a link to the family's GoFundMe page. It's on our website. Now they say the money will go towards a memorial and eventual burial costs. Well, another investigation underway at Lake Mead. More human remains were found. Our sister station in Las Vegas reports this is actually the third set of remains found in the last three months. They were located at Boulder Beach, which is also known as Swim Beach. Now, all of the bodies, they do appear to have been discovered due to Lake Mead's receding shoreline. That's because drought continues to affect the area. Turning now to fire season this morning, weeks of high heat and little rain being blamed for several blazes in the western U.S. The Oak Fire, that's the one raging near Yosemite National Park for its fifth consecutive day. There is good news, though. Firefighters, they believe they're finally starting to get it under control. This morning, uh, we reported 10% containment on the fire. Uh, tonight, we're reporting 16% containment. So, you know, it's not a huge number, but it's a pretty big percentage jump. The Oak Fire broke out Friday and quickly spread to over 17,000 acres just west of Yosemite National Park. And we have reports it's already destroyed more than 50 homes and other buildings while forcing thousands of residents to evacuate. Well, in the meantime, down in Texas, at least 20 homes have been damaged or completely destroyed by this grass fire you see. It spread quickly across a suburban Dallas air area. It jumped from this spot to that spot just in a matter of seconds. And then everything went completely dark. I couldn't see anything from the smoke that was from all over here. I could barely see my hand in front of my face and then I started choking. Bone dry conditions down there. Now investigators, they believe it may have been started from a spark from a lawnmower blade that struck an object on the ground. Well, hot and dry conditions, they continue across the state of Idaho. Northeast of Boise, up near Salmon, firefighters are trying to stop a fire from reaching homes. That's the Moose Fire. 800 firefighters are currently battling it. That fire is burning 21 miles north of Salmon and has burned more than 35,000 acres. At one point, we're told flames were burning about 1,000 feet per hour. It's 10% contained at this time, though crews say it could take till the end of the month before it's fully contained. 
Well, staying cool in these hot temperatures is key this summer in neighboring Oregon and heat excessive heat warning that's in place through Thursday night. Volunteers are out trying to keep people out of the heat, especially those who don't have a cool place to call home. We can at least um, cool it down, put our eyes on people, get food and water and things like that in our system. The city of Portland also extending their local pool hours and access to the Willamette River. Now officials say more people are trying to get in the water, so hopefully that all helps out. And just a reminder, if you are going to the water, you need that personal flotation device. Always got to stay safe there over on the water. Yeah, smart of those kids down there. They look like they're at least cooling off. Yeah, made you definitely heading to the river, finding some way to be cool today, whether it's, you know, by the water or your air conditioning, whichever you choose. But we are in it for the long haul. We have a few more days of triple digits. How many are we looking at? We're looking at multiple days, up to five to six days of triple digit weather. Not only Oregon is getting hit with a heat wave, the West Coast is getting hit with a heat wave right now and Idaho is not being left out. 102 degrees over in Portland, 108 degrees over in Medford as well, over in Salt Lake, 100 or 99 degrees there. And as you can see up in Boise, one of the highest temperatures on this map here, 102 degrees expected as the high here. Now, surface smoke forecast for you. We're seeing the smoke start to move eastward from that moose fire that is 10% contained. But as it is 10% contained, we could see that smoke start to make its way to the Treasure Valley by Thursday. We'll just have to wait and see. But Futurecast showing us what we can expect for the next few days in terms of cloud cover. High pressure is entering the Treasure Valley once again from that low pressure up north north and to the southeast of us. Now that we're going to see that low pressure over the next few days as well as we experience these high temperatures. Lots of sunshine is well expected, but we can expect highs for the next few days at or above 100 degrees and no change expected through the weekend. Now those high temperatures today, 102 expected here in Boise, 103 over in Emmett and 105 degrees over in Ontario. Eastern Oregon seeing some heat over there and then up in the mountains, 97 degrees over in Idaho City, 98 degrees in Stanley, and 92 in McCall. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It is 640 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and Newstock KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Everything rolling on along. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on Newstock KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And don't forget about our question of the day. The question is, the average person learns how to do this at age eight. Okay, Vasily, what are you thinking? Well, I like the bike guess, but I'm going to stick with my guess right now, learning how to play an instrument around age eight. I feel like it's a little bit young, but I feel like that's when I learned how to play, an, or learned, that's the age I learned how to play an instrument. Yeah, what instrument do you play? I'm curious. I don't really play it? any instruments now. It was definitely <laughs> elementary school where okay. my instrument uh, time started, but I played the snare drum in fourth and fifth grade. I knew gotcha. <laughs> okay, so you have some good beat. I was going to say we should have you bring it in and give us a little, oh, a little no, tune no, no, maybe no. on no the morning news. No one needs news. to see that. <laughs> All right, let's see what everyone has to say. A few guesses from our viewers this morning. What did we do at age eight? Making their own sandwich. Yeah, you can learn how to cook for yourself about that age. Yeah, if that you want to bring your own lunch to school, <laughs> might have to make it yourself. <laughs> exactly. All right. Douglas says making phone calls. Oh, my dad used to do that to me, ordering pizza. Did your parents ever make you do the order yourself? Oh, no, no, no. I know oh, how to do it that young. <laughs> probably why I have this job now. All right. Well, <laughs> let's take a look. Gail says getting to pick out your clothes, your own clothes to wear. That's a good one as well. I think eight years old is probably safe. I was doing mm -hmm. that at two years old. Did not turn out well. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, we still have about 15 minutes left to guess, and we will read that answer right before CBS This Morning too much fun. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, trying to find a new home for hundreds of beagles. What's next for these dogs after they were rescued?
CBS 2's Adventure Weather local forecast showing us the temperatures over in Payette. 103 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 71 degrees tonight and by tomorrow it'll jump up to 105 degrees. Blazing hot temperatures over in Payette expected today and tomorrow. Over in Cascade, 93 degrees expected as the high. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight. By tomorrow it'll jump right back up to 94 degrees expected tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, hundreds of beagles are looking for a new home. They were being rescued from a facility that actually sold them for medical testing. Now, Nicole Comstock has more on the rescue and what's next for these dogs. <coughs> they're bursting at the seams with beagles, but the 200 dogs they're taking in here at Priceless Pets in Chino Hills are just a small batch of the 4,000 beagles who were freed from a Virginia breeding facility that sold dogs like these to medical testing labs. We were able to intercept them prior to them being tested on, so we are thankful for that at least. They never had to endure all that. But this beagle with a little mama belly did have to endure breeding and branding. She has letters tattooed inside her ear. As you can see here, she's obviously a little nervous. But she doesn't have to worry anymore. The Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against that breeding facility in May, alleging dozens of animal welfare violations. The company denied the allegations, but announced it was closing that facility and placing the dogs with the Humane Society. All those large companies like Procter & Gamble, they do test on animals. Tide, L'Oreal, Dawn, they are all tested on animals. So making better decisions when it comes to purchasing our products is the best way to help. You can also help by giving these deserving dogs loving homes. The beagles are all between one and five years old. They're full of spunk. You want to come out. You want to come out. And they're still sweet as can be, even after all they've been through. Their breed is amazing. Their disposition's great. They're usually good with kids. They're good with other dogs. But these ones do have those needs. They are timid. They're scared. They don't know what it's like to be a dog. So they need adopters who are capable of giving them that time and that patience to learn how to be a dog. The close-up of their eyes and their so little cute. floppy ears. <laughs> oh, it makes my heart swell. I love those little guys. Hoping they all find homes. 4,000, though. Mm -hmm. For real. Wow. All right. Well, let's take a little look at our weather for the day because it's picture perfect right now. Of course, the sun is starting to shine. We're starting to feel some of that heat beginning to spread its way through the Treasure Valley. But look at that view. Yeah, just gorgeous. a gorgeous view of downtown here this morning. 70 degrees to start off your Tuesday with a little bit of southeasterly wind, just six miles per hour with a little bit, just a little tiny breeze. But gorgeous morning, no clouds in the sky as of now, as your sun is rising. When you head out the door this morning, you're going to see it's going gonna, it's gonna to start to heat up very, very quickly today. 86 degrees by 11 o'clock. That'll jump up to 93 by 1 o'clock and by 5 o'clock. We'll reach our high today of 102 degrees. We're looking at a range from 101 to 105 here in the Treasure Valley. 101 down in Mountain Home and 103 degrees expected over in Emmett. 105 degrees expected over in Ontario and then up in the mountains. 92 degrees expected in McCall. 97 over in Idaho City and 88 degrees expected in Stanley. Now for the extended forecast for the Treasure Valley, we're looking at a scorcher of a week, 102 to 103 degrees expected as the highs throughout the week this week 103 on Thursday and 103 expected on Saturday above average temperatures throughout the week leading into Monday we will drop below the century mark about 98 degrees expected next Monday now for the mountains we're seeing a similar trend as well with temperatures about 10 degrees above the average with 94 expected to be the highs there. Make sure you check in for Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham's forecast today at 4, 5 30, 9 and 10 o'clock tonight. Thank you, Vasily. It is 649 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A beautiful sunny view for your morning commute. Just watch out for that sun glare. But other than that, not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, more women taking an interest in whiskey. Why the once male-dominated industry is now seeing a shift.
And here's our chime in photo of the day. This is from Peg. She says this is a great horned owl feather that she found at her place. How neat. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Peg. To submit your photos, you can head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 6.52 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Scotland is home to 138 active whiskey distilleries. Now they attract a record number, record number of tourists right before the pandemic, almost 2.2 million. And as the overall popularity of Scotch grows, more of those visitors are women. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports from Isla, Scotland on the trend. Thank you. Kim Mabus traveled from Philadelphia to the Glenlivet Distillery in Northeast Scotland to buy a few bottles she can only get here. Pretty big Scotch fan. I have a nice collection at home. These days, she's enjoying it with a more diverse group. So many friends of mine have started drinking whiskey, female friends. It's, it's crazy. A 2020 study from the market research company MRI Simmons shows more than a third of whiskey drinkers are now women. At Ardbeg Distillery on the Scottish island of Isla, Visitor Center Manager Jackie Thompson estimates the percentage of women guests drinking whiskey has quadrupled since she entered the business 25 years ago. And she's observed a difference in how women and men approach scotch. I see with women often, uh, they have a great appreciation of sticking their noses into whiskey in order to enjoy the flavor of whiskey. Um, men maybe tend to go straight for the palate, whereas women go for the scent and the aroma of a whiskey to appreciate it. Women aren't just drinking whiskey, they're making it. The Scotch Whiskey Association estimates 40% of this country's 11,000 industry employees are female, and they're breaking the glass ceiling in what used to be a male-dominated field. Kelsey McKechnie was the youngest woman named an apprentice malt master for Balvenie Distillery at the age of 24. We feel that back in time, women just weren't in these roles and, and now they are. She sees a future with more women calling the shots in an industry that just keeps getting bigger. The Scotch Whiskey Association says every second, 44 bottles of Scotland's national drink are exported, with four of those bottles headed for the U.S. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Isla, Scotland. Well, back here in the Treasure Valley, we're getting ready for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Now, pilots are preparing to fly at Ann Morrison Park. Greg Lindsay, who's a commercial hot air balloon pilot out of Arizona, he's been flying in the Spirit of Boise since 2018. He says the founders, Lori Spencer and her late husband, Scott, are the reason he keeps coming back to Boise each and every year. We do 20 events a year. If I had to strip down to five events, that would be one that I would always come to. Mark your calendars. This year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is August 31st, 31st to September 4th at Ann Morrison Park. And the city of Napa wants to spruce things up with a new sculpture for Lloyd Square in downtown. And city leaders are now searching for an artist to take on the project. Now, they do want it to be an interactive sculpture, so it should celebrate Napa's culture and history, as well as they say be durable and low maintenance. Now, the budget for this artwork is about $90,000. The deadline for artists to submit their ideas is September 2nd. And looking ahead, an exciting week scheduled for the Treasure Valley. Now, the San Ignacio 2022 Festival is at the Basque Block starting Friday at 5 o'clock. It runs through Monday evening. And the Canyon County Fair is Thursday through Sunday. If you buy tickets early, it's just $6 for adults, $4 for kids. It's 12 and under. It's two more bucks a ticket if you do buy it at the gate. On Sunday this year, the fair will be putting on its Latino Festival. Lots of fun. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. The average person learns how to do this at the age of eight. That answer, Vasily. Swim. Oh, I, th I should have thought about that. Swimming. Oh, hey. I feel well, like he I learned how to swim around then. Yeah, no, that seems about right. Hey, maybe a good way to stay cool today. We'll see you back here at 11 a.m. Have a great rest of your day. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.